What's up guys, it's another tutorial for my boy Gary, um, soundcloud.com slash wanhup, that's his soundcloud for all you other people out there listening, I'm just going to quickly show him how to, a little bit about automation and side chaining your compression, um, a very basic thing in all electronic dance music, so if you already know those things, don't even waste your time in listening to this um, quick little video, I'm going to make it sweet and short hopefully, so just uh, quickly follow along. Um, I have here our basic operator that we made in our last video and uh, I just made some one small tweak. I brought the decay time up to 1.62 seconds on all of my four oscillators just to change the sound up a little bit and I have a low pass filter loaded in um, with the frequency all the way down. So you can kind of hear what that sounds like. I'm just going to quickly put in a little chord progression um, just give me a quick second to... We're going to start out, it's going to load up here at one bar. I double clicked in here to give me a little clip. Um, its default value is one bar, and I'm going to make four one bar, or a total of four bar chord progressions. Um, the first three are going to be a bar long, the last is going to be a half bar. So I'll start off um, just kind of quickly mapping this in. Bear with me for a second as I draw these notes in. That's my first bar. Let's go on to my second bar. Step up. Let's go to bar number three. Open up the piano roll a little bit more so I can see all my notes. Let's go for our fourth bar. I want to do two half bar chords. See how that sounds. Alright, so we have that programmed in. Now remember your different views, uh, your arrangement view and your session view. If I hit tab, it's going to switch over to my, um, my arrangement view. So I'm just going to tab back over. Now if I want to get this clip into my arrangement view to actually arrange my song, all I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the clip, control C or Apple C, command C, whatever you want to do, copy, tab over. We're using number two operator and we're just going to paste it right in there. And there it is. And now to oper to automate this clip, in other words, bring it in and out, we can automate any of these values that we see here or in here or pretty much any value that you have, you can automate it and it becomes really simple. And all we're going to do is I want to I want to bring this noise in and out. Let me stop playback from this clip. Turn over dub off. So I want to bring that noise in and out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm just going to click right here on the frequency knob. And what that did by clicking on it is it gave me these parameters automatically by default right in here. And this pink little line is where the parameter is going to be at. If we have our pencil tool open, we can bring it up and down just like that, bar by bar. Or, if I, I don't like to use a pencil tool that much, um, I build my own breakpoints. So I just double click on there to give it a breakpoint, double click over here to give it another breakpoint. And now the frequency is going to go from 30 hertz to 18.5 kilohertz and it's going to do that from bars 1 to bar 8 so let's listen to how that sounds
So you see it just kind of builds it in. So that's basically automation. You can automate any parameter. Any parameter that I want to click on, this is going to sound horrible if I do it, but I don't care. This is just for showing you the purposes. Um, if I click on LFO amount, um, it's right here. You notice it comes up. So if I want to automate my LFO parameter, double click there, create a breakpoint, create one here. And like I said, this is going to sound pretty horrible, but it's just for showing you. And so you'll see as my sound gets bigger, my auto, um, there's more LFO, and you can see in the corner that you're going out. So, that's what automation is. And like I said, you can automate any parameter that you see down here. Um, there's also another way to auto automate using um, your different envelopes. Uh, we'll go into that in a different video. Um, another quick thing I'm going to touch on is sidechain compression. So a compressor effect is what's called a dynamic processor. Um, and what that's going to do, what that means is it takes one thing and one thing in and that causes it to give it a different value. Um, so I'm just going to drop a basic compressor right here on top of my operator and then for this I'm also going to need another track to sidechain it to so I'm going to create another MIDI track drop in a MIDI track and I just want to use a basic drum rack so I can just get a kick drum in there that's all I'm trying to do right now dropping a drum rack in coming here to my samples and I'm going to grab a drum let's grab a kick drum open it up and whenever you drop a sample in always remember to come in here to your velocity tab and turn the velocity all the way up so we have a nice kick drum right there. Let's drop that in. Let's go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, Apple Shift M gives me a new MIDI clip. And all I'm going to do is highlight this clip, open up this view, and I want to go quarter notes on here. I'm just going to draw in kicks. Simple as that. And I don't want to draw them across all these bars, so I'm just going to highlight Apple D to duplicate across. Now we have a straight kick drum pattern. So what that's going to do for us now is we're going to come in here to our operator track, open up this operator, and we have our compressor. This compressor is not side chained to anything; it just runs off of, off of the frequency, um, off of the sound of the original operator. What we want it to do is compress it to this kick drum right here. So what we're going to do is click the side chain button on. We're going to select our input source, and this input source we want it to be the kick drum. So first we're going to have to find our drum rack. So we're going to click down to three drum rack. That's where our kick drum is. And our second part, this is important that you do this here too, so that it doesn't sidechain to the whole drum rack, that you just want the kick. Click down here, and we're just going to go kicks, four, and you could, it doesn't really matter which one you do. I like to just go post FX, just for shits and gigs, I don't know why. Um, and so let's give that a listen, to, and it won't, so as we can know, As I drop the threshold down, the volume pushing up from the kick drum is going to compress the volume of the operator down. And I like to, this ratio button right here is basically, you can think of it kind of how hard that compressor is going to work. So I like to set it to 4 a lot for a lot of my songs, just to make it work a little bit harder. Let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> So you can kind of hear that that drum pushing in and out those sounds, and you can compress any sound. So I'll just kind of you can use it in drops and everything like that. And that's pretty much it. If you got any questions or whatever, go ahead and shoot me an email, and I'll just let this play out for you for a quick second.